feel a song that's never been heard. Yes, indeed. Good afternoon, morning, ladies and gentlemen, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers and sisters. This is a community event for Revolution Sim Racing here at the classic Hockenheim circuit in the Groove 5 cars. My name is Kikodiak and I'll be your commentator throughout this evening's race. <coughs> 18 drivers join us for this particular round. It is um, Porsche heavy, as you can see by the uh, flick through the names that we've been doing. There's a few other rounds out there. Essentially, if it's grounding, it's a, if it's a Porsche, if it's screaming, it's a Capri. Current pole time with a stunning 153.640 is uh, this man, Alex Salmon. Second is uh, Cobasel, Cobasnell, I beg your pardon, in the white martini ish livery Porsche. Unstoppable in the same livery car. Whoops, getting a little bit too tail happy into turn 12. Nada is the next one on down. The top four are all Porsches. He's a little bit up on his time. Looks he's very close actually to Unstopper Paul. He is in fourth. Gosku in fifth position as he comes through. Uh, where is he? That is Clark. Turns two, three, four. The Clark chicane. Zemke in the next Porsche down the road. Down the road. He's just coming through. That's Ost five, six, seven, and eight. Steve G is in the pits. Then we have got just under five minutes remaining of this qualifying session. That is also a Porsche, I think. It's ghosted. It's a little difficult to tell, but I'm pretty sure that's Porsche. He finds himself in seventh with a 201 499. And along with Thomas Sikora, whose car is it's invisible by that uh, long view, but that is a Porsche as well. His is the plain white one, and he is choosing to park it there. Four minutes, 20 to go. They could get out and, uh, and get another lap. And oops, that's Jono in the Liga Capri. Currently 9th, 203, 9 11. He's uh, put that one back in the pits. And Battenberg, that growling Datsun Nissan. <coughs> Call it as you will. He's the only one running the car. It is a monster 
of a vehicle. He's coming through the center S, 9, 10, 11. And you can see how little grip there is on these. It's godlike quick in a straight line, but it is, as you can see, it's a hell of a handful through the corners. Catch a glimpse in the Porsche as well. In 11th position, 204, 210. Oh, beg your pardon, there's a BMW. I was, uh, I was thinking that was a... Uh, that was a Beamer he was in, that is a... Uh, sorry, I was thinking he was in the Porsche, he's actually in the BMW. And that also screens his little head off. Eric, also in Porsche, he's uh, just coming around Ost 5, 6, 7 and 8. Well, 5, 6 and 7 is the chicane just before the long... Oh dear, he's had an argument with something as well. Yeah, 5, 6 and 7 is the... Uh, S is just before the long right hander. Here is Dark Side in the Capri. <laughs> really getting that tail out. In at 13th, 206, 421, Meerkat. Next one down the road. And the Capri screaming down the road. As uh, he is heading towards. Oops, as he's uh, <laughs> found a gear that the car didn't like. He's heading into the center S's. Atmos in the BMW, 15th. He's just coming around turn 13. Sacks. As it was referred to back then. Oh, now of course the stadium section should be pretty familiar with anyone that has uh, seen the Hockenheim circuit, but of course this is the classic layout, the engine killer of the uh, Formula One world. And does Atmos improve? He does by nearly a second, but remains in 15th position. V Sonic has not set a lap and will start no higher than 16th. He will be in one of the Porsches. Ben Wataki is in the Nissan. There's uh, under two minutes to go now. He's very cautiously coming through the Senna S, 9, 10, 11. Along with Mark, who is in. I did remember what he was. I think he's also running the, the Nissan Skyline. As my wife has brandished me with food. It's always quite nice to see. Alex then continuing on his way in the red and blue Porsche. He's just winding up for another lap. It's right on board with our current pole sitter. And this just gives you an idea of how much he's sliding the car around. N2. Turn one, the Nord curve. Oh, careful. You don't want to invalidate it already. A minute to go of this qualifying session, then it is a one hour race. Preceded by a four uh, excuse me. Preceded by a formation lap. Oh this car getting very twitchy under braking as he's coming into Clark. Turns two, three, and four. <laughs> a very unique style. Uh, I can't say I'm a fan of driving the car like that. Actually what we'll do. Oh, we can't, I can't turn the interface off, unfortunately. Into Ost. Five, six, seven, and eight. So five is, is the preceding turn to that uh, little left right part. Onto the back straight there. I think that's Dark Side ahead in that uh, blue Capri. Now into the center S's. Oh, that is indeed Dark Side. And uh, you can see how early. Alex Hammond throws the car into the turn. Oh dear. That's uh, one of the red Porsches off into the dust. And uh, Alex then blasts past the Capri. Into Agit. Turn 12. He's half a second up and he's already three seconds clear of anybody else. Here's Alex Salmon, so he is quite clearly very comfortable with these Group 5 monsters. And look at that, he's drifting like a pro. Coming through Sachs, 13, there's 14, there's 15. Then into Opel, the final turn, turn 16. And let's see what his time is. 53.6 was last time around. And he didn't, oh he did, 53.2 was that last lap, very nice. So that is the marker laid down by Alex Salmon. Unstoppable, just coming through the stadium himself. Ooh. Now the turbo on these cars is utterly vicious. 
So you've got to be careful how you control the all the German horses coming through the wheels. Did Unstoppable improve? He did not. From 158, 278. There's Battenberg. In the Datsun. Pretty sure he's referred to as the Datsun. I actually forgot to check. He will start holding no higher than 7th. Who else is on the track? Meerkat, his day is done. That's also the Capri. British livery Ford. I have no argument against that myself. And he jumps back to the pits. I'm just waiting for Back and Battenberg on top of all and Alex Hammond to do the same. All for the counter on the right to count down. Such a lovely circuit, this. Was used for Formula One racing up until the circuit redesign. Uh, just the turn of the century. Oh, I love the noise of that Dustin, it's beautiful. Beautiful, I say. I was half tempted to take part in this race. However, <coughs> I know how much I struggle with these Group 5s. And uh, I have never commentated on these lovely cars. I've always wanted to. Part of the reason why I love RSR, they do very different car track combinations. And um, that's a garage door. Wonderful. But there is the uh, qualifying confirmation of Atlantic Salmon by three seconds, nearly three and a half seconds over Cobusnell for one and two, Unstoppable three, Nada four, Zemke five, Gosku six, Battenberg seven, Steve G uh, 208, Cataclysm nine, Thomas Sakura ten, Jono eleven, Eric twelve, Mirka thirteen, Darkseid fourteen, Atmos fifteen, Ben, ben Rotaki sixteen, V Sonic, and Mark not sitting a time at the back of the field. Right. <coughs> Have a bit of ironic. It's belting hot here in the UK, and I start to get a cold. Only me. That could only happen to me. <coughs> so apologies for the coughing and the spluttering. Highly unprofessional. I grant you. I am just adjusting my fan because my goodness me, do I need it? Now, unfortunately, the race feed box tends to break at this particular point, so we'll pay. Little attention to that. Standard affair. The next two minutes will be taken up by anyone who wanted to make a setup adjustment. That was also the other reason why I didn't take part in it, as I'm hopeless in anything that isn't... Well, I'm hopeless across the board, as far as racing is concerned. But uh, in non-default leagues, I am even worse. And it's as uh, custom setups allowed for this. I am the first clue about setting up a car. So I opted not to go for it. But I do love the opportunity to be able to commentate on different types of cars. Of course, GT3 and Formula 1 being the mainstay of my commentary calendar. So having the opportunity to commentate on these beautiful Group 5s, I jumped at the chance to do it. My lovely wife getting home early from what she was doing meant that uh, I was able to join in on time, so to speak. I'm just giving me food. So I'm throwing that down my neck before, <laughs> before we get our one hour race underway. Now five minutes has been added to the timer to give us time to get the parade lap done. Even at crawling speed they shouldn't need five minutes to do a lap here at Ockenheim. So it should be at least an hour of racing and I suspect this is going to be something uh, something really to behold as certainly as we saw from Alex Salmon these things are very very lively so ignoring then the five lights oh it's uh, someone at the back in one of the BMWs really eager to get underway <laughs> and reverse back to uh, reverse back to his spot. Don't think he got a, a jump jump start warning. Mm. 
lovely cars these. Right, so that's the food dealt with. Uh, even bears need to eat. Okay. I'll examine them. Leads the way in the red and blue Porsche. Curb is now in the Martini-esque colour car, car number 40. The car's numbers are not unique. Unstoppable. Next one down the road, the camera's actually pointed the wrong way. He's already gone past the camera. I'm going to catch up with him in a minute. Come on. There you go. Car number 1S. Oh, is this one on the front? Is it one? I think this is 1S on the side. It does indeed. As they come through, they turn the map on. on the speedy one as well. There you go. So they're coming through the first chicane. That is Clark. Turns 2, 3, and 4. Nada in. The next Porsche down the road. Just see if it's the same colouring as Alex Salmon. Wow, that is, uh, that is a very, very slow formation lap. I'm surprised it's actually as slow as it is. I don't think uh, Alex has been uh, asked to pick up the pace a little bit, but well, they really are taking the time. Fine by me, because I get to stare at these beautiful cars for a little bit longer. Oh, I'm going to stare at them for the next hour, admittedly, but at uh, admiring pace. They continue then as they come into the Ost curves. Five is that fast right-hander leading into this tight chicane, six and seven. And then it's the long right-hander on turn eight, which is this section there is Zemke in the next portal down the road, car 43. Gosku in the Momo coloured Porsche. See, so comes through the shot as well. It's difficult to tell, obviously, each car apart. At, uh, with that kind of camera angle, let's go with that one. Battenberg in that roaring Datsun. In seventh position, <laughs> he's just grow He's actually just stuck it in fourth. You can see where the red line is. The red line is really, really low. It's not that low, that's just where the rev counter is, <laughs> but uh, it's, I think it's a bit lower than uh, the, certainly the Caprice, the Caprice have an insanely high uh, rev amount. There is the lead BMW of Steve G200. I think the reason why they're taking the, uh, taking the formation lap so slow is because it's so easy to spin these things. As soon as the turbo kicks in, it's like a bomb going off. There is Cataclimps, he is in. See which car he's in. Oh, he's in the plain white Porsche, I believe. Oh no, he's in the white BMW. I keep thinking he's in the Porsche for some reason. I've got to get it out of my head. <laughs> the category is in the Porsche. No, he's in the white BMW just coming through the bottom of the shot, followed by the white Porsche. That is Thomas Segura. Or Segura. I keep saying Segura, that's not how you say it. Jono. Ah, that distinctive Zach Speed scream. That is, of course, a Capri. They are now coming through turn 12. Agip coming into the stadium section. Now forming up. Eric. In again, a Martini color Porsche. Another car number one. Oh, careful. People don't bump into each other. Meerkat in the British liveried Capri. Dark side. Now without the damage to the front of his car. In the black and blue Capri in the... 15th is Atmos in the German flag liveried BMW. Then it is V Sonic in the Nissus. Uh, Big one, no, he's in the that red Momo Porsche. Then it is Ben Ben what's uh, Ben Watke and then Mark using the Skylines. Back up to the front then it is gonna be up to oh Cobazel Snell's just crept ahead of Alex Salmon. Gonna be up to Alex then as to when he drops the hammer, and there he goes. We are racing. Oh no, that's the Datsun bouncing off the wall. That's a big problem. That's uh, not Cataclysm, it's Battenberg. There was a uh, just clunking into the wall. He just got his got the tail all oh, out of kilter, which again is so easy to do. And that's one of the skylines that at the back of the shot there. That's uh, it's Mark that's got himself all out of shape. Eric has dropped right to the back of the field in the Porsche then, but he should look to try and get through the field as quickly as he can. Jumping back up to the front then. Oh no, that's unstoppable. He's gotten that all crossed up. 
as he's coming into the Clark chicane. So easy to do. There's no ABS on these cars, and there's a lot of weight. These are very heavy cars, and there's a lot of German horses to try to slow down. So it is, uh, and he's got Zemke right on his tail as well. Is he Zemke? Here we look. Thinking about an inside move coming through five, six, seven, and eight. That's pretty dangerous. There's no real braking zone, and it's so easy to get that chicane wrong. But you get really heavily rewarded if you get it right. And unstoppable, we're thinking about an outside maneuver on Nadam. I think he's got his gear change slightly wrong. And he suddenly lost that uh, momentum. Zemke has gone through on the inside, heading into the center S's. Can he slow the beast down? Just about. That is the fourth position then for Zemke. And already Alex Salmon is two, nearly three seconds down the road. And to be fair, Kobus now is actually a couple of seconds ahead of, uh, or one and a half seconds rather, ahead of Nada. So, oops, that's a problem. That's Nada that's run white. And we're going to be seeing a lot of that. And there's the lead BMW of Steve G coming right behind the red and blue Momo colored Porsche. It's a Ferrari then. No, no, Fer no Ferraris on this field. Look at that. Now the BMW is a little slower, but it's much easier to control. The turbo is just as vicious, it's just the way that it's delivered. It's much easier to control the little BMW. It's actually much more of a cornering car than the Porsche is. But there you'll see that now the Porsche really starts to come into its own. It's so struggling. Look at that Nada really struggling to wrestle the car around the corner. And now it is just going to run off. Look at that. Look at the speed differential. If you can wrestle the car around the corner much like this man can, then you've got a real advantage. You've seen how Alex Salmon just slides the car around, in, around the corners. And that seems to be his uh, recipe for getting the most out of the Porsche. But look at this. Battle for second. Kobus now Zemke and Unstopper Paul. Paul trying his best to stay on the back. Oh, Gosku. Gosku's in trouble. He's falling through the field. One would assume there's damage on his car. And there is indeed... He doesn't fancy trying to drive that thing damaged. They're hard enough to drive without any damage on them, to be fair. Also, another battle here. Who is it? It is Darkseid, Atmos, and Eric. Battle for 10th place. Capri, BMW, and Porsche. So it's all three. Oh, we do have two other cars represented in the class, of course. The uh, Skyline and the Datsun. Battenberg and the Datsun is there in 14th place. Oops, he's caught that apex of turn seven. A little hard. And there you can see he's just struggling to get the power down. Every time he gets the foot anywhere near the floor, the, the tail just doesn't want to stick. And that is uh, part of what makes this car so difficult to control. We jump back up to Eric then. He's trying to keep up with Atmos and the BMW, but uh, he was much quicker through that uh, chicane section as you would expect. And is that... Is that Goskew out? No, it's not Goskew out. He's still in the pits then. Of course, uh, as predicted, the race feed box is broken. 2.03. Look at the lap. And there you go. Alex Salmon now under two minutes already. In the lead Porsche. Two minutes. 0.476 by Kobus now. So now people starting to get into the rhythm. Let's stop a ball. Has uh, gone up to third position. Zemke was there as well. And there you see Gosku just coming out of the pits. He is now going to be a lap down on about half the field. There is Nada in the red and blue Porsche. Steve chases on in the BMW. Now Gosku can unlap himself. He's allowed to, and there he is. Look. And just to show you the pace, he's opting to stay behind because they have just come up to the Clark turn. No point trying to throw it on the inside. He's lost enough time in the pits already. And running a little wide. And Meerkat's now in. That is the British liveried Capri. No obvious damage on his car. And along with Thomas Sakura in the plain Porsche. Oops, stopped a little bit short of his mark there. But now I can't remember if there's a gentleman's agreement for a tyre change in this race. I did read the rules, but I've completely forgotten them. Eric having a look on Atmos. Pile should just blast past the BMW, but now he's just going to scare the car back under control, get it settled down through the Oster Ost curves. If I can say it. Ost means east, if I remember in German. Someone, someone I'm sure will remind me. 
There's Mark in the background in one of the Sky Knights. Unstoppable. Starting to get close to Kerbis now. We can see that with the exclamation mark on the timing screen. And it's Eric really struggling to slow the Porsche down. And that's mainly the characteristic of the car. It's such a monster to slow down effectively. But he manages to do so. Without too much bother at all. Sorry for that. Jono is uh, right with Vsonic then. So the uh, black and blue Capri. Right with Vsonic. Oh, so there are two black and blue Capris. There's the other one of Dark Side just behind. Screaming Capri versus Growling Borgia. Vsonic holding that inside line and now can detonate the mighty power of that German Porsche. Now coming through the Nord curve. You can see how quickly the cornering car found the, the group fires are essentially split into two. The ones that are very good in the corner, such as the BMW and the Capri, and the ones are blistering in the straight, such as the Porsche. But you watch when the Porsche, when he's on his Porsche, gets to the next set of curves, the class, the class chicane, two, three, and four, the Capri will be able to really ride back in. And Battenberg has got his Nissan in. <laughs> Lovely growling engine. Of the Datsun. Gives it a rev as well. Just uh, I'm not surprised, Lollipop Man, you jumped out of the way as soon as the car roared. So in then comes the Datsun. Alex Salmon leads by 6.2 seconds now. The last lap, 58.9. And he's already quicker, as you can see. Absolutely stunning effort by our race leader. Oh, no, to do there. He runs a little bit deep. At turn 12, he's very much a fan of sliding that car. I mean, it is a way of getting the getting the thing to rotate. And as we've seen from others, you do need all the help you can get with these big cars. And ops to continue. So lots of people are getting their pit stop out of the way. Oh, that's the uh, roaring dancer then of Vattenberg now getting himself underway. Can't see any obvious damage to the car, so... Oh, we've lost one! Who did we lose? I don't know, I'm afraid. <laughs> Do not know who it is, but we have lost down to 17 cars. We're only on lap six. With uh, 50 minutes still to, get, still to do, so sadly whoever it is we've lost didn't uh, manage to get 10 minutes through the race, which is a great shame. Oops. Alex Hammond got a bit greedy on the gas. It turned three, that put him a little bit too deep into the corner and compromised his exit, so he lost a little bit of time. And there you go, you can see how much time he lost. But, let's have a look at Jono again, he's back on the case of that red Porsche V-Sonic. Exactly as you saw last lap, now's when V-Sonic starts to run off dark side there in the background. I think that was Eric you just saw coming over the crest in the background of the picture there. So Darkseid in a good opportunity to capitalise on the mistake. And whoa, look at that as Jono throwing the nose in and hoping the tail will follow. Drifting like a pro. It's not the fastest way of doing it, but it is certainly a lot of fun. Well, it kind of, I guess it depends on the setup of the car because we saw Alex Hammond doing it to a very, very effective means through qualifying, certainly. And Jono was able to get a great turn of speed. And there you go. He's, you can see how much he's gained on the Porsche just by taking the Oscar 5 through to 8 really, really much quicker. And that is, I think that's Goscu's car just ahead. It is indeed. Who's he catching up to? That is one of the BMWs. Mirkan? No, that's a complete. Score, no. Again, I can't remember who's in what. <laughs> and again, look at the background. So now... He's only going to start to run away again, but the Capri will start to reel him back in. And look at that. Jono, half a second up, over half a second up on the last lap. Oh, no, it's Cataclips. Cataclips was the BMW I was trying to identify. He's lost it at turn 12. And that's going to put Darkseid right on his case as well. Oh, Darkseid a little deep there into turn 13. And that's how quickly the Capri reels the Porsche in in the twisty bits 
but he needs much more than that. He needs to get past the Porsche really in the beginning of the stadium section because even if he gets past through the stadium section, the Porsche is just going to blast past. This very oh, steady, Jono. Patrick Prince not far behind in the BMW. The BMW and the Capri are relatively similar in the sense that they are far better suited to corners. This will make him a bit of an interesting choice for this type of race, but it depends what people are quickest with and most comfortable with. Whether it was the fastest car theoretically on circuit is completely irrelevant. If you can't control the thing, then it's no good for you. That's a glimpse then now honing in on Jono. Seven tenths, less than seven tenths separates those two. There goes the Sonic out of the shot. With Darkseid not too far behind. Into the Oscars again. Ah, we've lost another. Oh, Cataclysm was a little deep there. He got very unsettled coming through the Oscars. He was a little deep on six and couldn't quite catch the car before he caught the curb quite hard, pushed the car around wide, and had to slow down to prevent him flying off the road. And last, another car has fallen by the wayside. We're going to identify it. Whenever anybody comes into the pits, we'll see if we're going to identify who it is. BMW comes through the center curves, 9, 10, 11. Background, who do you just see there? That must be Eric. Yes, indeed. I was just thinking I hadn't seen that uh, German flag colored BMW for a while. I wonder if we got that bus, we haven't. There you saw, well, that's Sikora here, or Sikora. I keep saying, the reason why I keep saying Sikora is because I commentate on, on somebody called uh, Thomas Sikora. Uh, in a different league, so that's what keeps throwing me off. The air cap is the British livery Capri. Back into this battle though, catch a glimpse. Oh, again, the tail just kicked out. The turbo kicked in at a moment he really didn't want to. But that puts him on Jono's case now. We can't tell who it is that's in the pits. We don't, can't see who it is we've lost. So Cataclysm then continues to stare at the back of Jono's Capri. Two under one, under two minutes. Alex Hammer and Curtis now. Still six and a half seconds apart. Alex Hammer has caught to the back of that is Meerkat in the and he, in the uh, British Livery Capri gets out well into the out of the way of the race leader. Not gone Meerkat's way this race. Catch a glimpse is still right with. Oh, Catch a glimpse is really with the Jono. Then Jono had a great, great run through that particular chicane. Catch a glimpse felt he had to take a much wider line. Oh, the tail of that BMW just does not want to stick. He did well to hang on to that. Dark side is falling off the back of that particular battle. There's V Sonic catching up to Goscu's car. Oh dear, that's a problem for Jono, who's gone too deep at turn nine. This is going to be an opportunity for Cataclysm, he's gone on the gas. You can just see where the, the throttle kicks in and out, and whoa, that's going to be an outside move for Cataclysm. Can he get it done before turn 12? He's nosed ahead, and he has to give room, but that's put him wide. He couldn't turn in when he needs to, drifting it like a god. Very nicely done, but of course that's just completely killed his momentum as he came back onto the track. Dark side has gone through into ninth place. Brilliantly held there by Cataclysm in the BMW. Whether he'll be happy or not that I caught that, I don't know. Zemke comes in. Now, let's see if we can identify who it is that has retired. Oh, it's Battenberg and the Nissan that is out. Who's the other one? Oh, it's one of the, the Skylines, is Mark, no, Mark's still in. Uh, it must therefore be Ben, Ben Watke, I think it was, that was running the other one. So that is our two casualties so far in this race. Zemke is in, Darkseid is st really staying with Cataclysm now. Come up to Clark once again. There, just in the distance, is Jono. Oh, no, they both got it wrong. <laughs> they both got that very, very wrong. 
And Darso's gonna. Oh no! And that is how easy it is to lose the tail, just where the turbo is so vicious on these cars. It just. The, the rear tire just cannot cope. And so Dark Sky. Dark Sky? Let's try that again. Dark Sky was not able to keep the power on the road. And that's gonna allow Eric. There he is in the Martini livery Porsche to close in on him. Stop a ball now getting under the two minute mark. There he is. <coughs> Excuse me, he's getting that uh, drifting technique under control as well. 58 7 from Alex Salmon. 202 to Kobus now. And a 159.5 for Unstop a Ball. Very nice lap times that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, throat is dry, but I will commentate nonetheless as he jumps around Meerkat. The only one to run that livery Capri. Yeah, the car back under control takes a long time to slow the car down. Again, you see how he's able to slide that Porsche in to have to rotate him to come through turns two, three, and four. And it carries on. <laughs> you can hear how loud that Capri is. You can hear how far away. You couldn't hear the Porsche at all. Just heard the screaming Capri. There he is. <laughs> Of Mirkar again, then. that's the. Uh... Now, Unstoppable took an interesting line. They took quite a lot of curb on turn six to try and line it, to try and straight line seven as much as he could, but it meant he didn't catch the apex, which didn't push him wide. We saw. Uh, I've forgotten who it was. Was it Cataclysm? Yeah, it was all Cataclysm to get it wrong and get pushed onto the grass a few laps ago. Uh, that's not Jono directly ahead of him. That is, I assume that's Gosku. It is indeed. Gosku is not having, uh, not having fun out there. He ran into trouble. Oh, that's Darkseid. Oh, no, pick your pardon. That's Jono. That's Jono that's run into difficulty. He has straight lined that. Turn two, three, and four. That's Clark. <coughs> and that's going to allow. Gosku and the Cataclysm to uh, pull in on him. Oh, that's a massive amount of curb on turn seven. And that's the that's the risk reward of that particular turn. That's the os curves. That's the risk reward. You want to try and take that as quickly as you can because you've got that big, long, fast right hander of turn eight onto this big straight. So you want to carry as much through, speed through it as possible, but it does mean you have to be very close to that apex, and it is vicious that particular apex so if you catch it wrong that's what happens a nice demonstration there by Jono as Gosku is coming past actually catch a glimpse oh no he's not he's actually allowing the BMW through or he was drawing alongside just through the pace difference and just let the Beamer back through again oh Steve in the lead, BMWs actually came to the back of Nada in that red and blue Porsche. 203 from Steve last time, 208 from Nada. So the red and blue Porsche are running into a bit of difficulty there. Still Alex Salmon running in the 58s. Incredible pace then. If you've got the confidence to slide the car, you can see how much opposite lock he's putting in, and that's constantly. Every time he's cornering the car, that's what he's having to do. That's Mark in the skyline. Now, the, one of two skylines in the race. Certainly, one of them has gone. Oh, again, tailed a little, uh, little bit, a little bit frisky there. And Mark dutifully gets out of the way of the race leader. showing a masterclass then of how to run these group fives around around turn 16 opal curve opal turn opal curve oh, it's getting a little squarely and that was a 159.66 through the nord curve oh, just about kept it on Realize what that uh, creepy something or other it says on the front of the car. Creepy Crowley. Okay, if you insist. <laughs> 20 minutes gone. Just under 40 to go. Alex Salmon leads as we as he started lap 12 by 12 seconds there there thereabouts. 
lead from pole. As he heads on down to the off curve. Taz five, and they just. And there you go, he jumps over the uh, apex of six to get as good a run through seven and eight as he possibly can. And gives him maximum speed along this very straight. That's Thomas Sikora in the plain white water in the background. Ooh, don't go too deep into turn nine for Senna. Senna curves, nine, ten, eleven. Porsche down the road as Cataglimpse has come in. His BMW. He opts for now to get the pit stop out of the way. Again, amazing pace in by Alex Salmon. He's got the art of drifting that car to an absolute T. Because again, without ABS, it can get very, very frisky under braking this car. But he's using how loose the car can get as a means to rotate the car which is very risky but is really paying off for Alex Salmon then to come through the final turn a bit of a touch on the grass but nothing major and that will be oh we lost a tiny bit of time through the stadium section at 58-7 nonetheless no one anywhere near him on place but on stop poor it's starting to close in again on on uh, Cobbisnell Cobbisnell to Minutes 0.8, unstoppable, was seven tenths quicker than that. So he is reeling in the next portion down the road. 1.7 separates the two. Cataglimps now coming out of the pits after his stop in the BMW. No damage at all on his car, so my suspicion was right. But it's a gentleman's agreement for tyres, and that is Zemke that's just blasted past Atmos. Oh, he got the entrance into. Ostkers were completely wrong. He was way too hot. Coming through five. Couldn't get the angle he needed. And has spun it. And lost him all that progress he'd made. And overcooked. <laughs> yeah. You've got to be careful how you get back under underway. Because if you're trying to put too much uh, power through to the tarmac, it will understeer a bit. Same keep back underway then. Oh, I've lost him a fair bit of time. Ooh again he's overdriving the car trying to push too hard to close down the gap to Atmos he's jumped over the chicane at the Santa Rosa's 1911 he's back underway nonetheless particular battles of position at the moment there's our race leader he's just gone past uh, that is who's, I've forgotten who it is that's running that uh, I remember who it was earlier, the, the uh, black, gold and red BMW. This dark side comes in. In the uh, black and blue Capri. Opted for now to take a stop. They can do. They can take their stop any time they like throughout the race, but they must complete at least one more rating lap after they come out. So they can't leave it to the very last second throw it in and then cross the line whilst in the pits. Not allowed. Cataclips then trying to regain some time after his stop. He's on the back of Mark in the skyline. Oh, Mark's run a little bit wide. Cataclips gets on the inside of the Nissan and a blast on pass to take 12th from Mark. Then also Zemke is with Atmos again so it didn't take the Porsche long. Oh, and the BMW's had trouble. At turn two, three, and four, he's had trouble at Clark, which has given Zemke an easy pass. Oh dear, damage on the front of Zemke's car, so he's had an argument for something. Oh, again, he took them much more cautiously, although he straight down a little bit too much, I think. But uh, he continues on his way nonetheless. And Dark Side now on the way for having his stop that will put him down in 15th position. Continue on his merry way. Where's Alex Allen? There he is. He's gone through Senna. And that streams on down to turn 12. Cobus now is uh, 16 seconds behind. Holding on to second. He's broken away from Unstoppable Paul. Unstoppable Paul and Water lost. They did 13 seconds last time around. As 
Cobus now has just gone past Atmos. The BMW we were looking at before. There you see. Oh, steady. 20 seconds. I think Unstoppable's had another problem. Oh, now he's been held up. He's suddenly lost about 10 seconds on Cobus now. So. Yeah, there you go, he's lost 11 seconds from this lap alone. So they driving the car somewhat. Or, it could be that they're overheating their tyres a bit. Because with them sliding the car a lot, it will generate a hell of a lot of tyre temperature. So it could be that the tyres have had enough. We'll see if he comes in this time. No, nope, he's looking to carry on. And that's another one gone. Another has left the ranks, unfortunately. Let's uh, see who it is, unfortunately. Oh, is it dark? No, no, dark size still in. No, I'm sure we'll be able to identify who it is a little bit later on. We'll see how much time again. That's two laps in a row for Unstoppable that uh, hasn't gone his way. Oh, it's catching clips. Oh dear, that's Unstoppable won't be very happy about that. You saw how much he's had to struggle to slow down. Unstoppable will not be happy about that. Cataglimpse is not on the same lap. And Cataglimpse has uh, also got it all completely wrong. And the Clark chicane yeah, actually puts Mark close to him. Yeah, I think Cataglimpse should have got out of the way. A little bit earlier on, let both cars take the line they need to take through the Clark curve. It's, you actually saw quite a good display of two different lines to take. It just didn't quite pay off a mark because he tore the apex of turn seven too hard. But he keeps it from spinning. Of course that uh, drops him off the back of the BMW of Cataclips. That's not Meerkat on the back now. Meerkat is there in the debris. So uh, again, not entirely certain who it is we have lost. Three cars done as we are just approaching the halfway stage. And there's a Group 5 race here at Hockenheim Classic. Not sure who that is, but is keeping out of Alex Hammer's way. But again, it just looks like he doesn't want to stick, but it's the way that Alex has throw that Porsche around. And that's Thomas Segura in the white Porsche that's come in. I don't even see the car that we recently lost. No, that's, that's Battenberg's Datsun. Nope, we can't see who it is that we've recently lost. That's a bit of a shame. Uh, I'm trying to identify who it is. And Mark's just gone through. The Meerkat as well. We gain the position. Meerkat already having been through the pits. All our secret now underway. We join the track in uh, probably three starts. I'm going to claim it. No, no, he didn't. So 13th position then for Thomas Sakura. As a then crosses the line. Summit continues unchallenged. You can see only three cars, or two other cars, I should say, on the lead lap. Such has been Alex's command of this particular race. Coming in. Yep. He's happy to slide that Porsche some more. He has come past the black and blue Capri. Is that Kobe Snell? There he is. 20 seconds behind Alex Salmon now. But 24 ahead of Unstopper Paul, who has been struggling the last few laps, I think it's fair to say. Because he's uh, had a scrape against the wall at some stage. As we are now halfway through. Oh, too much, too, way too much. Oh, very nicely held by Unstopper Paul. Just the right amount of throttle without the turbo kicking in, making that considerably worse. 
be surprised to see Unstoppable in the pits pretty soon, but he's choosing to continue at the moment. Zemke is in though. In that black and red Porsche. Whoever it is we lost recently left the session a while ago as a cataclysm comes through. That's not Eric, unfortunately, already ahead of him. Tell. Is the camera pans out? Nope, we have no idea who that is. And that is Mark coming in. Uh, Nissan comes in for a stop. Uh, is MK underway yet? Nope. It does take a while to change the tyres on these things. Uh, not entirely a surprise. Probably no particular battles to report. Everybody is fairly spaced out. And there is Steve that's come in. In the German flag livery car. Gives the engine a good old squeeze of revs as he comes to stop. The V-Sonic goes through. In the Momo Porsche. Jono. Coming through the stadium section through the final turn. Let's gain a few here. That's it, Gosku has finally managed to overtake a few people. He's been stone dead last for quite a long time. He's gone ahead of Zemke and Mark. As you see Jono trying to throw the tail of the Capri out. There's a little bit too much downforce with that, natively at least. But time nonetheless, and Kobus nails him. Second place runner has chosen just after the halfway stage to bring the car in. Look, the longer you can leave it, the uh, less time you have to run the fresh tyres for. Mark comes out in the Nissan. Is Zemke still stationary? It's a long pit stop there for him. There must have been damage on that car, slowing him down somewhat. Steve still hasn't moved either, so again, no long pit stops for them. He comes unstoppable. He's going to gain that second place. Oh, tail didn't want to actually slide on his car there. Looks like he actually bid in quite early. Ah, that's Zemke underway. Oh no, is it steep? I thought I heard a car engine rev then. That's why I thought one of these three had gotten back underway. Here comes Nada. Oh, one of them's going. Who is it though? Oh, Steve and Kobus now. Both come out at the same time. Oh no! No! You swine! You utter swine! Ah! Oh. I didn't do that. That wasn't me. I have accidentally done that before, but it wasn't me this time. Well, that brings a rather anticlimactic end to that one. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I gave you half the race. And I have no idea what's now going to happen because I can't rejoin the session. I still don't think I can. I might be able to. Not sure what's happened there. Why, oh, why? I still seem to have internet access. Uh, the server's still there, so quite what's happened there, I do not know. I'll see if I can get back into the action. Unfortunately, the interface doesn't look good. I'll get back into it. I have to catch up with who's where. Apologies for the technical difficulties currently being experienced by the stream. Uh, even I'm not immune to them. And we'll just get back into the session. Oh, that's uh, slightly unusual there from Alex Hammond, but I suspect that's just as uh, my game was returning to normal. As we've returned... That's very strange. So as we've returned... Nada... This is in third. It's just coming through. Turn... Let's bring my map up again. There we go. So coming through turn 16 crosses the line. Cobus now, wait for, wait for him to cross the line because the uh, time is completely wrong at the top there. Uh, refusing to update, so that's not helpful in the slightest. Oh no, there we go. So wow, Cobus now really 
Uh, mind you, I don't, think, I don't know if Nada's been through the pits. I'm certain on that one. Alex Salmon now leads by minute over Unstoppable. It was a reason for this man. Of course, Alex still has to come in. V-Sonic, haven't seen him for a while. He finds himself... Ah! Is that race leader? It is! Race leader unstop uh, Unstoppable. Uh, Unstoppable might be the race leader after this. Alex Salmon comes in. I think that damage was the, the strange lag moment I was experiencing returning to the server. Jono is pretty close to V-Sonic. And Eric is not far behind either, so there is a bit of a battle forming there in fifth place. Where's Unstoppable? Paul? He is quite a way back, still 30 seconds down the road. As one of the BMWs comes through turn 12. So Unstoppable may not gain the lead. Ah, yes, because I've rejoined, the uh, race feed box now wants to join in. As Eric and Jono both make a bit stop then. Six and seven, and we just lost. We have just lost someone. It was uh, Thomas Sikora. Yeah, now this is working. It tells me who retires. So that, of course, promotes everybody from 11th upwards. Mark Saikosku, Mark and Zemke. There's Unstoppable. He's coming in as well. Quite a few people coming into the pits at the same time. There's Nada. There he is. And Nada coming in as well. Yep. That's a lot of people making their pits up at a similar time. Catch a glimpse, of course, gaining some positions. Oh, that's Alex Salmon coming out. Just beats the BMW. Yeah, with... With the length of time Alex Samuel was in the pits, well, there was no damage on that particular car, and that is now 12 seconds between yourself and Cobus now. 12 and a half seconds, rather. There is the white Porsche. Trying then to get back in touch with Alex Salmon. Of course, Alex is going to have the much, much pressure tyres. Nada and Unstoppable still yet to move. Here comes V-Sonic with his some cars behind him, they're actually a lap down from V-Sonic. Is that Dark Side? It is. It's not making ahead, that is going to be... Whoops. A twitch there by Dark Side. Oh dear! Whoever that is has uh, fallen off the road, unfortunately. And it is right with an unstoppable already. Whoops. So unstoppable and Nana right with one another. Should actually be exclamation uh, there it is, exclamation mark right there. They are racing, and that is third position. They came out of the pits at the same time. Whee! That's determined. Oh, Nada also. Uh, what Nada did there, he was following Unstoppable Paul's breaking point. Would have realized a little too late that uh, Unstoppable Paul missed it as well. Uh, behind them. He's not catapults. See who that was. You see the Porsches try and straight line that as much as they can. Whereas the BMW and Capri will or can afford a little bit more turning angle at that particular turn. The Oscar curve. That has fallen off the back of Unstoppable, unfortunately. He saw me because actually moved up to third. Unstoppable is right with him though. There is the Martini Kit under Porsche. The tail out again. Now that you can see is that red and blue Porsche on the left side of the Capri. So a potential three-way battle forming here. And Jono's got company as well in his Capri. So that was Dark Side that we were seeing. That is Steve already ahead of him. Final pressure on as they now come up to Clark turns themselves. Of course, these two are these two cars are pretty good through the turns. Oh, the Capri getting a bit fidgety. Just to keep it under control. Oh, again, Jono really struggling to get the horses down onto the road. But continues to chase the BMW back up to Unstoppable Paul. There goes V-Sonic, there is Unstoppable, and only a couple of seconds back is Nada, who has Darkseid 
in short succession with one of the white Porsches. That's the ball really reels in Vizonic again. He's going for the sliding option. Oh, the end of the car rotated. 40 minutes done, 20 to go. An absolutely identical race of acceleration, but look how far over to the right. He's on it. He's defending that inside line. That's going to compromise his potential line through here. Oh, that's too much curve for Unstopper Paul coming into six. You saw he really had to get out of it to avoid crunching into the wall. And that's going to put Nader on his case then. See the uh, red Porsche closed in on Unstoppable a bit. I would imagine Nana probably didn't have a great run through that chicane either. So he could have potentially gained a hell of a lot of time on Unstoppable through that one. Oh, possibly a little bit deep coming through Senna. But nothing too bad. They continue on their merry way. Both cars close, a lot of ca cars close together, but not uh, necessarily racing for position. Kobus now continues to be that a little bit quicker than Alex Hammer at the moment. Now under 10 seconds between the two. So we could have a battle for the lead before the checkered flag falls. Steady. It is slightly banked, but you do have to be careful how you take that non-stop. Paul is right with Vizonic now. We jump on board with Unstopper Paul coming through the final turn. Vison has gone a little deep, but Unstopper Paul caught the apex a little bit. And you can see how early Vison can miss our inside line. He's not confident on keeping Unstopper Paul behind him. Oh, Vison had a lovely run then through the north curve as a meerkat comes in. And there is the British livery Capri. Oh, and that's, look at that, in the slip three, one stop of Paul, blast past V-Sonic into third position. Can he get the car slowed down? He gets the move complete before he gets the next. He came, but he's overcooked it. He's heavily overcooked. That keeps the car under control. He's going to allow V-Sonic through. Oops, had a bit of a twitch there. Oh, dear. There's a few cars really struggling to keep, keep things under control. Unstoppable is going to have to do all that again. And V-Sonic is very cautious through that particular curve. And look how much time. And Unstoppable, who had a much quicker run through that particular corner. And there you go, look. That is how you get it right. That's how much quicker you are. Oh, trouble behind. That was a very close move. Whoever that was in the background there. And Unstoppable then comes back into third position. But can he slow it down for the center? This is just about. Keeps it on the road. Gets the tail wagging as well, just for good measure. Eric has actually gone up to eight. So Eric and... Oops! That's Jono that's uh, flown a little bit deep there on the through turn 15. Oh, that has gifted Eric the eighth position. And if he's on it, he's still staying with us. Stop a ball at the moment. Take him back into the stadium section. There's a little bit of a bank to that turn 13. It's the sax curve, but it's not a lot. That's not Nada that's catching up to Vsonic. Vsonic's very, very slow through those turns. Is he coming in? He is indeed. He's had enough of those tyres and is looking to ditch those. Nada then comes through, he's going to take that position, that's by the dark side. It is indeed, that's dark side that is on the tail of the Porsche of Nada. Let's check in where everybody is. Alex Salmon. That damage is not correct, that happened at a lag moment when I rejoined the server. After being rather unceremoniously booted off. Atlantic Salmon continuing his incredible pace, but has lost some of his leads. Now down to 7.2 as they come through the stadium section to this man, Kobe Snell, who post pit stop has been setting some incredible pace. Let's follow him through to the end of the lap. We'll see what their lap times are. Alex Salmon, 2.01.7, so he was definitely slower that time around. Kobe Snell across the line, and it is. 158.4, that's one of the fastest laps we've seen all race. Eight and a half now separates the two. 
Unstoppable Paul, we've been seeing he's actually he's a minute down, or almost a minute down from the particular battle we've just been seeing for the lead. Steady. Nada has fallen 6.2 down from. Oh, so beg your pardon, let's see, that was post pit stop. Nada has actually got back into fourth. He's now 7.7.5 uh, now from Unstoppable Paul. Catch a glimpse in the BMW. Up into fifth position. Finds himself a minute down from Nada. Oh, wagging tail on the BMW. He's probably enjoying himself through that. But it's uh, a lot of a lot of power to get down. And actually, yeah, Kobe, that was just realised in the race speed. Kobe's now what? That was the fastest lap, 158.473. The fastest sector, interestingly, the sector three, which is the stadium section. Unless that makes sense, was actually just done by Steve G. There he is. V Sonic is the Porsche just ahead of him. So Steve G's got some pace on the BMW, but he smacks a commentator curse once again. He smacks the apex of turn seven too hard, has thrown him off into the grass. That has destroyed his charge after V Sonic. How on earth have I got a blocked up nose in the summer, only me. Eric in the Porsche. There's a uh, distant 8th position from the back of Steve. There in the background is the next car in the sequence. Jono, the black and blue Capri. Darkseid in the same livery car. He's 30 seconds down from Jono. Gosku, who had to pit very, very early on. He's now, his car looks remarkably clean now. Is in 11th place with Meerkat in the British livery Capri, Mark in the Nissan, in the Skyline, and Semke in the Porsche at the back of the field. Oh, now something's happened here. Kobe Snell's lost a fair bit of time. It's now 12 seconds between the two. So he did a 201 last night with 158.8 by Alex Salmon. It's interesting to see, it's not just that, it's setting the uh, impressive 158s. Kobe Snell's been right up there as well for most of the race. Looks like Alex has got someone ahead of it. That's one of the road porters, possibly Koski. It is indeed. But uh, Alex has just had this incredible way of being able to control the tail to help rotate the big old Porsche. Which has helped him maintain an impressive lead in this race. Slow that beast down. Oh! That's not going to help. He was able to keep it under control. He hit the apex of turn ten, quite uh, turn nine rather, quite hard. Would have lost him a little bit, but nothing too major. Just looking in the background to see if you can see Cooper's now's car, and I don't believe you can. As the race starts to enter its last phases, and there you go. There's a perfect example of the slide that Alex has been able to put that car through. Don't overcook it. Because it can lead you to push that car too hard. That's amazing sliding by Alex. That is absolutely fantastic. As he's come through that stadium section. He's got a bit of a lead to himself. Why not? Enjoy the race while he can. And a 58-6 then. By Alex Salmon. There is Kobe Snell. What did he do last time? Well, that one is Gobi Snell. He got uh, held up there. Well, he got ended up being behind Meerkat. Through no fault of Meerkat at all. Yeah, there's not really much you can do in the stadium section other than just jump off the road. One point, one and a half seconds between Alex Hammond and Gobi Snell that time. And Steve is starting to come back on V-Sonic. Well, of course, he will do through the stadium section. It's where the BMW is strongest. Uh, I think that was a big moment of oversteer for the v -Sonic. I'm not sure he was actually trying to defend the inside line. He just ended up having a big moment of oversteer, just like that! From Steve, again, he's trying the sliding motion as well. v -Sonic's touching the grass, he's not being pushed on the grass, that was rather on his own. And then the Porsche engine just absolutely detonates as he then flies down the road. Mick has seems to be getting close to Gosku as well. So uh, V-Sonic had to be careful how he went past Mark in the Skyline. Oh, big problem for V-Sonic. 
That was a huge moment there as he was coming through Clark. And Steve has managed to get past the skyline of Mark without too much trouble. You saw how Vsonic really struggled to get the car slowed down again. We have a lesser than 10 minutes to go. Steve is staying right with Vsonic then. And again, look at the tail just getting out. Oh, that could have been nasty. Because the extra pace that Steve had through the Ost curves just put him right on the tail of the Porsche. Obviously, the BMW can break that much later and corner that bit quicker through the center curves. But even still, oh, goodness me. The Porsche is just struggling to get the power down into the timer. Again, Steve not going to be able to do anything about it. Now it's going to be an opportunity. Have a look on. Oh, is it maybe push the, the Porsche through turn 12? Surely it's going to be an inside move at turn 13. No, he off not to. The Porsche's gone deep. And that's a great chance then for Steve in the BMW on the inside of the Saks curve. And up into sixth position he goes. He'll be able to get himself a little bit of a gap between himself and the Porsche. But he won't be able to build up for too long. Eight, just over eight minutes to go. This is going to be an interesting test for Steve. Can he keep V Sonic behind him? This is what it's from the. This is how the Porsche just reels in the inverted commas smaller cars. And there you can see closing in, closing in, closing in. And Steve goes to the inside, goes to cover the inside line off at Clark. Steady Sonic and a big moment of wheel spin there for the BMW. That's going to ruin the momentum. And V Sonic now should be able to blast past the BMW. But what lines are going to force him onto for the Oscar? There he goes. And that move is done before they even get to the braking zone. Is it going to force him into an awkward position? You can actually see the shadow of the BMW staying right with the Porsche. Both of them get through it quite safely. Oh, well, whether that was by design or by luck, that was well closed off there by Vsonic on the outside of turn eight. Just completely killed the momentum of the BMW. Streaming down towards these center S's once again. Again, the Porsche feels so clumsy through these slower corners. The BMW is just so planted. And then, as we said before, the Porsche then can just release all of those horses. So memory says the BMW is actually the lightest powered of the Group 5s. Well, you can see how effective it is through the turns. This is going to be another inside move at turn 13, perhaps. Oh, especially as V-Sonic throws it off the road. That's not going to help. That's going to give Steve... He's giving Steve a head start. Oh, V-Sonic then. Struggling to get that Porsche back underway again. And he's... Ooh, and he's pushing a little bit too hard to get the car underway. Very gentle, very patient with these cars. It will not take kindly to be thrown around. Although, the way Alex Hammond drives it, you could be <laughs> forgiven for thinking otherwise. Although, Alex Hammond just did a 2 4 So, he has made a mistake somewhere. We got really caught out behind the Mac markers. Oh, and again, jumping over the apex to turn nine through the center S's. Is that dark side? That's dark side. There he is. It is indeed. That's dark side in the next car along from Alex Salmon. Oh, there's uh, Alex takes a road cone with him. Whoa, careful. Getting the right lines. You can see under braking, he manages to rotate the car before he gets into the into the turning zone. So before he's even got through the braking zone, the car's already begun to rotate. So very risky, but exceedingly effective if you can get it right. And last time around, that was a 159.017. Jacobus now, he seems to have a much more stable way of going through the much more traditional manner of going through it. His last lap, a 2 minutes 0.5. So, 
not working out for Cobras now. We have less than five minutes remaining. Just Alex Allen, last path, dark side again. The uh, battles we were previously seeing seem to have resolved, although V-Sonic is going to be interesting to see. And yeah, you saw V-Sonic try and throw the nose at me. He ran out of momentum, so he just almost ground to a halt. Steady, keep it to the apex of turn 13. It's exceedingly hard technique to get right. You can see the lap times between V Sonic and Steve last time around 205 to 209. That's how much time V Sonic lost with the off that he had at turn 13 last lap around. Steve 2037, a stunning lap from him, and 2046 from the Porsche. So Steve managed to open up a bit more of a gap. And Mark, Mark has a mark on his name. Ah, that is why that is Gosku coming in again. Oh dear. So, a last minute sprint onto soft tyres, I suspect, for Gosku. He wants a fast slap. Why not? Alex Salmon now leads by 15 seconds, so Kobus has made a mistake somewhere in this lap. Oh, and again, very wide there by Alex Salmon. As they come through turn 12 and 13. On he goes, and you see how much he's rotated the car before he gets anywhere near the apex. So it's a great technique if you can get the setup just right. But the risk is very, very high. It's a 58.5, stunning lap then by Alex Salmon. Three minutes to go, two laps remain here at Hockenheim Classic in the Group Fives. Cobus now. Across the line, he's second, and that is, yep, 205, so he had indeed made a mistake. It has been from pole, this man so far. He leads by nearly 20 seconds now. Cobus now, two. Unstoppable Paul in three. Leads now there by 13 seconds. Fourth place Porsche just coming through turn eight. Catch a glimpse minute down from that particular battle. He is the lead BMW. You see again the BMW doing the uh, doing the slidey trick as well. The BMW definitely has the advantage in the cor in the corners. There's the Porsche utilizing the monstrous engine on the long straights here at Hockenheim. Steve G. The flat in the German flag colored car in sixth place. Seventh is V-Sonic. He's really struggling with that car now in the closing stages of the race. Eric in the next portion down the road. Again in that martini colour car. He crosses the line. Jono in the lead Capri. Coming through the stadium section. Dark side. In the next Capri down the road in 10th position. Meerkat in the British livery car. 12th is Mark in the remaining skyline. Zemke has got it all wrong coming through the final turn. His race has rather unraveled in the closing stages. And finally Gosku, who has not long had a pit stop, so he's going for the fastest lap. There is race leader. He has started the final lap. He screams on down towards the Clark chicane. Turns two, three, and four. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Hard on the gas then towards the Oz curve. Thousands down, but no doubt Alex Salmon cares at this point. Catches the apex quite nicely. And so, so look how much opposite lock he was putting on. I'll cop with you to see it firsthand, although the screen is not actually cracked. Past uh, Jono's Capri. That is the center S's, turns 9, 10, and 11.
every time he's making a turn, he's having to put in a fair bit of opposite lock. Streaming on towards the final, towards the stadium section for the final time. He's three and a half tenths up on his best. Might he steal the fastest lap that's been Cobus Nels for quite a while? Into turn 13, throws the tail out again, but the nose just gripped up a little bit too much. He's possibly lost that three tenths then. Through the final turns, into 15, and around the last turn, your race winner in the Group Fives here at Hockenheim. What's his final lap? Was really wide on the final turn, and it is a 158.0. Was indeed the fastest lap by a few tenths. It is Alex Salmon taking the win. Kobus now has had that fastest lap snatched away from him. And over the line then comes the white car number 40 for second place. Unstoppable. Oh, and such has been the lead that has been maintained. He's still half a lap down. And he's uh, overcooked it through the arsed curves. Only he continues. Steve didn't actually get up to fifth position ahead of Cataclyms before before the lead across the line. So Cataclyms made a mistake. Oh dear, that's a pretty hefty mistake that uh, Cataclyms has made. That's one way to make the car lighter. Beast on is actually right behind him. Is the Porsche going to be able to do anything? Not likely. Here comes the Beast Sonic then. He can't in, he, there is indeed nothing he can do to deal with the charging BMW overcomes. Steve, of course, they are on a various different laps, so they're not coming across the line in order. And nice, it buries the throttle and sees what he can do. That's uh, the Capri's, I think, having a fight back up there. Vsonic's across the line. Eric just coming across the line now. I think it's just one more. Is that Jono? Oh, no, Jono's already across the line. He's having a, a battle there with Darkseid for who could kill the car more. And here comes Eric. Who's still got across the line? Yep. And it's Mark in the skyline. He'll be the last one over. is done and there it is then the confirmed finishes Alex Salmon at the f death of the race taking the fastest lap 158.061 Cobus Snell 2 Unstoppable 3 Nada 4 Steve G uh, 205 Cataclysm 6 V Sonic 7 Eric 8 John 9 and Darkseid rounding out the top 10 with Meerkat 11 Mark 12 Zemke 13 Goski 14 we lost Thomas Sakura and Battenberg earlier in the race. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with me throughout the recording. My name is King Kodiak, and I will see you back here for more racing action. Thank you very much, and good night.